can't imagine being trusted with an iPad in kindergarten. I just can't. When we were kids, they didn't trust us with scissors. <laughs> they gave us plastic ones, those little plastic ones. And I had to wear a helmet at recess. That's what... <laughs> Yes, I do. There's a lot of technology in school. <laughs> I think um, a huge part of our children's education is uh, impacted by technology. Um, more and more so, we are um, bringing technology into our schools. The use of Chromebooks, iPads. Uh, with our older students, they bring in their own devices, their iPhones, and and uh, tablets, and in all of our classrooms and in our learning commons, we now have smart boards uh, for use in the school. So technology is a huge part of education today. I think it would be a little boring and yeah. <laughs> I think when you talk about students being exposed to digital, um, to technology versus reality, um, it's really important when you're programming for students in a school that there's a balance. And our students have um, a wonderful balance between the use of technology, the use of traditional means of finding information, um, by bringing um, our staff, bringing experts to talk about different topics. We need to always have a balance. We don't want our students to rely solely on technology, but we certainly want them to be very well versed with technology because it will be a part of their careers that's guaranteed. Sometimes, yes, because if you look up something, there could be something inappropriate. Thinking about whether it's a positive or a negative development, I would say that it is a very positive development for all of our students. They have instant access to um, information. Uh, we do have to teach our, our students about digital citizenship and about safety with using um, technology and that's what we do. But um, it certainly provides a wealth of information to our students as well as the opportunity for differentiated instruction with children. Some of our children will use iPads where others will um, use books where others might be working, talking in a group of other students, but it provides lots of different means of accessing information and lots of different ways of teaching the curriculum. Uh, with our younger students, with our K-3 to students, they quite regularly use the iPads and we have specific apps that have been um, put on those devices uh, for, that support our curriculum. So Rebecca and Trey, I brought an item, and I would like you to tell me what this is. Do you know what it is? Oh, I know. Oh. It is. And it's it's um, not any ordinary phone. It's an olden time phone. Yeah, they used that back in the day. Back in the day. When you say back in the day, and you say an old time phone, wh how long ago do you think this was used? Oh, 100. 100 years ago? Yeah, it doesn't even have no FaceTime. <laughs> no, I mean, it does. You could do it, but then no one would see it. You'd just be talking right into the phone. Like, and like if somebody walked in, they would be like, why are you talking into a phone? Right, and then they'd haul you away and put you in the loony bin. Yeah, yeah. loony bin. Yeah, you know. We've learned with our younger students, actually with all of our students, the ability to access technology makes learning accessible for all. Um, there are so many new things coming out uh, with Google Apps, for example. We now have on all of our um, Chromebooks, we have the Google um, apps that include the new Google Read and Write. So that makes a huge difference for those students who find it difficult to get their thoughts on paper. They now can use the voice to text um, device and all of our students are using the voice to text option with Google, which means that our students who have learning needs are not being centered out. All of our students are doing the same thing. Um, sometimes it's fun, but sometimes it can be challenging because you just have to wait. <laughs> That's some bad hat, Harry.